Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Distinct Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here with Albert Tenuta down near Ridgetown, Ontario. And we have been talking about a disease called tar spot for about four years. And Albert, you have found it. Yes, we found it here at Ridgetown. Actually, one of my colleagues, Jonathan Brinkman, noticed uh, this particular plot that we have uh, the other day and said, hey, can you take a look at it? And, and um, I think we found something unusual. And he hadn't seen it before, and it turned out to be tar spot. And you can see that based on you know, what we're seeing, it's pretty obviously why they call it tar spot. And uh, going through it, we're in a pocket here that has a considerable amount of tar spot and it doesn't take too long to go outside of this area where well, you'll see very little as well. Yeah. Hey, one thing you'll notice is that there are different lesion types out there. These are your typical stroma or tar, tar spot lesions where you see that nice tar spot um, stroma on the leaves, no true border or tan spot around it. Very typical of what we would see. Now here on this other leaf, if you look closely here, you'll see again, we have that tar spot stroma and some other critters coming around here, but you also start seeing this halo or tan spot around it, or what we call the fisheye type lesion also associated with it. So don't be surprised if you see both type of lesions, even on the same leaf. A leaf disease that's had a big impact in Michigan and Illinois and other places. Talk about the impact there, Albert, and, and why it took so long, shall we say four or five years, to find its way to Ontario. Well, as you said, it first came into you know, the, the U.S., you know, from Mexico, etc., where it traditionally had been um, in 2015, into Indiana, Illinois. And as with any disease, it takes a bit of time to build up that, the inoculum and, and, and get a foothold in a certain area and then expand. And we've seen that going right up to last year, as we said, and, and we've done a number of stories, as you said, uh, up to the Canadian border in 2019, where we've seen it. And so environment plays a critical role when it comes to any of the foliar leaf diseases and tar spots, no different than that. And so those years like 2015, 2018, those were the years that they had the greatest impact on yields in the Midwest US. And a lot of it was because the disease started much earlier. It likes cooler, wetter conditions, humid conditions, and those conditions were earlier and prolonged, which allowed the disease to get a foothold. Yeah. What type of impact? Up 30, 40 bushels? Yeah, it can go anywhere from, you know, in this case here, we're gonna have minimal, right? But there you've seen anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40 and above. Again, the earlier, the more susceptible the hybrid, the greater the impact. Now you've uh, got it here at Ridgetown, you've heard reports out of Essex, out of Lambton. How might this spread, Albert, and how, you know, what might the impact be in the years ahead? Well, this would be no different than the first finds in 2015 in that. You find it in a few fields, um, and more than likely it's in other fields as well. Um, the, Incidents and severity are, are pretty low, uh, although we do have some pretty good coverage on some of these leaves here. Um, the overwintering potential will still be pretty low. Um, going into 2021, you know, it can overwinter. Again, as I said, it's, it's at low levels, so you might have enough to sustain and build up into 2021. But remember, this is a very effective pathogen of moving by the air, and hence, you know, it, it would have arrived here through, you know, the U.S. storm fronts that we've had from Michigan, Indiana, etc. And more than likely, going into 2021, although we have it present here, our risk still will come from what's going on in the Midwest U.S. If we start seeing it early and we start seeing the numbers building up and that spore load developing early in the season, then that increases our risk. So it's important, although we have it, we still have to remember that every year is different and there's no guarantee if you had it in 2020 that you're going to have it in 2021. Talk about how we tackle this. Um, I think the first question everybody wants to know is, hey, do we have any tolerant varieties, susceptible varieties? How do you evaluate corn hybrids? Yeah, so Dr. Dave Hooker and I last week went straight over to the corn performance trials here at Ridgetown and, and looked. And, and in that location, again, it shows you how different environments change. In there we saw maybe one or two leaves that had 
uh, any tar spot on it. We're not that far away from it as well. And so do we have anything that is truly resistant? We don't know that. I don't think we've had the ability to detect that for sure in Ontario and even the evaluations in the U.S. We're not quite there, but there are differences in tolerance. And we can see like even in this hybrid versus um, some of the other hybrids in, in this area. And as I mentioned, the performance trials, there are differences in tolerance. So again, as you said, Bern, tolerance, genetics is the first start in it. And we have to determine where that foundation starts. Fungicide, another tool in the toolbox here. Your colleagues in the U.S. have done some work on it. What have they learned? What might we, what, what might we already have in the toolbox? Hey, what we already have in the toolbox is plenty as well. So many of the fungicides that are already targeting foliar diseases, you know, those ones that target our, our common rust, our, our northern corn leaf blade, our gray leaf spot, many of those are very effective against tar spot as well. And so we do have the fungicides available to us, and many of those are available in, as I mentioned, those diseases are present in Ontario, and we have fungicides that can work against these other diseases, and more likely will work on tar spot as well. And, and that. The question will become, how do you get the most out of those fungicides? So the timing will be important. So remember those 2015, 2018, as I mentioned, when there was the greatest impact on tar spot in the U.S. because the environment was favorable and it started much earlier. In those cases, an early applied fungicide, such as at the tassel application, could provide a benefit in that. But in, nor in most years, as we saw here in, in Ontario, it usually comes in at milking or later, that R3 stages, so those late stages of, of development in that. And that's where we're working with our U.S. colleagues, looking at those late applications. Is that another tool, R3 application uh, for, for tar spot? And, you know, is it provide that return on investment for, for producers? And do we get that adequate control? You know, one day, I don't know if, if it would work into a two fungicide application. It all depends on what happens with the disease and down the road. I know our U.S. colleagues are looking at that tassel application. And then do we need that R3 type application for a tar spot? But again, remember, every year is different. You gotta, uh, we've got to determine risk based on that. Final message for growers who are out there in their fields now and this fall and, you know, be th will be thinking about this through the winter. What do you tell them about, you know, getting ready for this disease and how, you know, how they can tackle it? Yeah, no, first of all, hey, many of us are out there. We're looking for ear rots. We're looking for other diseases and, and other issues. Um, we're just walking our corn before harvest just to determine um, what stage they're at, um, whether to harvest this field versus that field. Well, you're out there just walk as you're walking take a look at um, if you see any leaves that are infected with with tar spot note that and that um, for for next year do we need to have any critical plan in place you know for those growers that do have tar spot on there you may want to just you know manage that residue for instance that'll at least reduce that risk going into to next year for some of that overwintering it won't eliminate it as i said because of the spores being blown out blown over but at least that would maybe reduce your infield risk as well the most important thing is do like we did this year with all those phone calls we got be out there monitoring I don't care if it's insect frost or other things on there. If you think you got tar spot, give us a call. Talk to your CCA or your crop consultant, your local dealer. Get out there and, and find out if you've got it. So scouting is the is the important part. Also keep in touch. Look at some of the you know the the field crop news that in a, a website. We have the Crop Protection Network website. We have the IPM pipe, which has real time. Um, tracking of, of tar spot as well. Hey, that same night, we found it in Chatham, Kent, and Lambton. It was on that site. Hey, Albert, some great insights. A story, no doubt, we will follow. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time.